How's it going everyone? Brett Mix here, uh, back with another Royal Rumble review. Today we're going to do the 2007 Royal Rumble from San Antonio, Texas, the hometown of Shawn Michaels. The second Royal Rumble to take place from this event. Ten years before this event, the 1997 Royal Rumble took place, where Steve Austin won that one, and then Shawn Michaels beat Psycho Sid to win the WWF title. Now it's the 2007 Rumble with two world title matches, and a Rumble match itself as the main event. Uh, let's get right into the rumble, but first I'd just like to say, if this is your first time here, uh, maybe you want to hit the subscribe button or the like button, it helps the algorithm and maybe gets my channel off the floor, it's a brand new channel and I'm just, it would mean the world to me if you did that. Uh, but first let's get into the first match of the rumble. We had Eminem with Molina versus the Hardy Boys. This is a great tag team match, uh, tag team matches... Uh, notoriously open Royal Rumble events. We get, I can remember back to Deadly Boys and Edge and Christian. Deadly Boys versus Spike and Taz. The Orient Express versus the New Foundation. The Orient Express versus the Rockers. That one was my favorite, personally. That was above a four-star rating, I believe, in my 1991 Royal Rumble review I just did last week. Uh, but this match, uh, it, ha it was pretty standard, but it, it got the crowd into it, and I guess it did its job. I rated it at two and a half stars. In the end, it was uh, Jeff Hardy who did pin Johnny Nitro with the Swanton Bomb at fifteen twenty-seven. So again, Eminem isolated the Hardy Boys, kept them out of their corner, uh, made frequent tags, uh, good psychology, good old school tag team wrestling formula where there was the hot tag. Hardy Boys did that famous ending and then got the victory over the heels. So pretty much your standard tag team formula to kick off a big pay-per-view event like this one. Alright, next we had Bobby Lashley versus Test. And I said two world championships. Let me correct that. Three world championships were on the line because this is the first Royal Rumble that ECW was a part of. And uh, yeah, this is the first match for the ECW title at a Royal Rumble pay-per-view as Lashley defended it against Test. Because when I think of ECW, I think of the two names that ring to me are Lashley and Test. There's a reason this ECW uh, experiment didn't last very long. This match was, uh, it was bad. Test's final appearance at the Royal Rumble, or maybe even pay-per-view for that matter. Andrew Martin didn't last uh, too much longer after this Rumble. I believe one or two more years at the most. Uh, it's a shame what happened to him. And I'm going to do a big, big uh, review thing on deceased wrestlers not reviewing their unfortunate demise, but uh, giving my thoughts on the wrestler, talking about how they passed and where I was when it happened, because we all have our own stories. And since this is my channel, I think I will implement that into the into a video one day. But anyways, rest in peace, Test. But this match here with Lashley, uh, you know, it was Power Man versus Power Man. They work at times, but you can see other times Lesnar and Goldberg at WrestleMania 20. They don't work. Uh, usually it's about how much time the match was given to see if they work or not. They gave these guys 718. Test was counted out by walking away, so Lashley retained. Uh, yeah, I gave this three quarters of a star. And we'll stick with that. But when I reviewed this 10 years ago, I'm doing the audio review now since I rewatched the event. Next, we have Batista defending the world title against Kennedy for the SmackDown brand for the world championship. JPL did his best at trying to get Kennedy over, uh, saying he was the fastest rising star in SmackDown history, beating world champion after world champion. So it was the booking, too, but they went a little bit quick with Kennedy. I, I think he lacked a little bit. Uh, I don't know if it was maturity or just the X factor, but he lacked a little something for me. Maybe you loved him. Maybe you thought he should have been pushed to the moon. I thought what ended up happening to him was pretty was harsh, but I still didn't get the hype. I mean, the guy said his name twice. He had a little bit of a charisma cockiness to him. Yeah, he was a good heel, for sure. But uh, main event player, uh, fastest rising superstar, I don't know about that. I, I wasn't a big fan. Uh, there's something about the guy. I don't know. He just didn't scream superstar. But that's me. Uh, this match, I gave it two stars and a quarter. Batista defended uh, the title with a Batista bomb at 10.29 to Kennedy. 
who did a decent job in this match. Uh, Batista and Kennedy, you're not going to think a five-star classic, but they did their they did their work. Next up, we had Cena and Umaga, the third world title match in a row. Cena defending the title against Umaga. And on paper, this just looks like a basic match, but um, no, this... This they these two guys went above and beyond what anyone thought was cap- capable. Uh, I mean, if you would have said three years before this that the rapper, the new rapper John Cena, was going against Jamal from Three Minute Warning for the WWE title in the future, you would have thought, "Really? Wow, that's wrestling's kind of fallen down." Uh, but no, Umaga's character really came out here. He was accompanied by Armando Alandro Estrada. I don't think I said the name as well as he did, but uh, nonetheless, Cena defended the title. Umaga is also uh, Umaga also passed on, so my thoughts are with him. And uh, John Cena had been getting booed a lot around this time. I talked about John Cena getting booed in the 2006 review. Um, uh, he's, he was getting booed a lot more by 2007, let's just say that. The ECW 2 One Night Stand event happened with the toilet paper and throwing his shirt back. Uh, Cena sucks became a thing, so people cheered Umaga, obviously, during this match. Uh, it was a bloody war, and the, the fans, the fans just ate it all up. Let's go Cena, Cena sucks was the chant. Uh, Umaga signaling for the Samoan spike had the crowd going. Uh, it it was just a great back and forth climax here, here and uh, Cena the the top turnbuckle he used as a weapon. Uh, a bloody Cena did that. He went to uh, but Umaga went to use it on Cena and and, and then Umaga got back towards John, but he countered it into the STFU. In the end, Umaga was unable to answer the 10 count after Cena choked him out with the STFU using the top loose ring rope uh, from the turnbuckle that I alluded to as a way of choking him out with the STFU even more. Just added the cherry on top, the bite to his submission move. At 23.09, Great War Championship match we didn't think we'd see. In the end, Cena was the last man standing. Awesome pay-per-view encounter. This was Umaga's shining moment in his career. I gave this match four stars and a quarter. 4.25. Awesome. Rewatchable, too. It still holds up. I mean, it's only been uh, 14, 15 years, but it still holds up. 16 years. All right, next we got the main event. We got the Royal Rumble, and this is a really interesting Royal Rumble. This is probably the first time since 1991, or maybe the first time ever, where there wasn't a spot in the Rumble where there was just two or three guys after the entrance have come out. Obviously, that happened at the beginning, and it has to happen at the end, or else you're never going to get an end, or you're never going to get a beginning. So, of course, there's going to be just two guys in the beginning and two guys at the end, because it has to be that way. But the whole Rumble didn't feature two guys in the ring at one point, at any other point than other than Ric Flair and Finley who began the Rumble, and Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker who ended it. Nowhere in that middle was there two men, or even three or four men, I can't even remember, until the final four. This match featured some of the most in-ring Rumble action I can think of since 1991. I remember 91 and 90 having spots with tons of wrestlers in it, but... This match was clogged. It it was different, so I liked it. It reminded me of the old school of the early nineties, so I liked it. But it 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 reeks of battle royal, uh, you know, where people are just in the corner trying to throw their leg over the corner, and they're not really making any progress. And you know, no one's really going to be eliminated like that. No big name anyway. So the the crowd kind of. You know, they sit back in their chair a little bit and get more relaxed when it's that kind of environment. But the first 10, we saw the Rumble start to fill up. Kenny Dykstra was number three. Matt Hardy and Edge were four and five, so they renewed their rivalry in that ring. Tommy Dreamer and Sabu 
ECW stars were in the ring. So this is the first match with ECW stars, SmackDown and Raw. All three had 10 each, I believe. And Tommy Dreamer and Sabu were the next two out. Gregory Helms, Shelton Benjamin were next. And then Kane was 10th. Uh, that's relevant because Kane, uh, after Flair's elimination, Kane eliminated Gregory Helms, and then he eliminated, or Tommy Dreamer, I should say, and then he eliminated Sabu by choke slamming him off the apron through the table he had set up right beside the ring, the entrance, the entrance side of the ring, the entrance way. And Sabu went through the table. That's just a great elimination up there with Snitsky's clothesline to Paul London's face at the 2005 Rumble. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm just geeking out of that elimination there. Uh, Kane, uh, you would think, would come in now and throw all these bodies out because there's seven guys in the ring still. You'd think, there, other than Tommy Dreamer and Sabu and Flair, all the other guys that still remain the same. Gregory Helms, Shelton Benjamin, Edge, Matt Hardy, Kenny Dykstra, and Finley were all still in the ring. So you'd think Kane was going to start throwing names out, but no, it didn't happen that way. The ring just kept filling up. We had CM Punk next, then we had King Booker, Super Crazy, Jeff Hardy, and that's just half the Rumble roster uh, that came out. Jeff Hardy was number 14, and, and the Hardy Boys sort of reunited here as Matt Hardy, who came out at number 4, was still in there, as was Finley, who started the Rumble at number 2. Finley would end up spending 32 minutes in this match, to be, uh, to be fair, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, the Sandman came in at number 15, and he didn't last long at all. He came in and hit a couple guys with a Singapore cane, and then boom, he's out of it just as quick. The fans did not like that very much at all. Uh, Randy Orton came out next, and uh, he and Edge teamed up against the Hardys, rated RKO against the Hardys. Uh, we got Shelton Benjamin still hanging on, Finley still hanging on. I believe Kenny Dykstra gets eliminated around this spot. Randy Orton comes in, as I said, and uh, the ring starts to, we start to see patterns uh, in the ring where two guys will just go at it with two guys, not three guys at a time or four guys at a time. We start to see like Matt and Edge or Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton uh, go at it like two guys in in each spot of the ring, I should say, for lack of a better word. Uh, so we see a little bit more diversion, but out next was Ben Watt, 17, and uh, he ended that because the crippler just went on a tear. Uh, you know, the double axe handle throw right when he come, came in and knocked guys down. Uh, this was Ben Watt's last Royal Rumble. It's unfortunate seeing Ben Watt any time uh, in 2007. It's just a sick feeling you get. I get uh, Rob Van Dam was next. Viscera, then Johnny Nitro came out after him. Johnny Nitro had some an interesting elimination. Uh, Kevin Thorne, Hardcore Holly, Shawn Michaels out to the DX theme. Got a huge pop in his own down. Then Chris Masters, Chavo Guerrero, MVP, Carlito. Then there's three guys left. The Great Kali, The Miz, and The Undertaker. But The Great Kali and The Undertaker did the most damage. Uh, now that we're at number 30... Now guys are starting to get out, go out of the ring because obviously it has to clear up for the final two. And they waited to the very end. The very end. Uh, the great Kali was throwing out people left and right. They missed Benoit's elimination because so much was going on at the same time. Uh, CM Punk may, it was still in there for a time. The final entrant, at when Undertaker came out at number 30, the people in the ring were MVP, Edge, Orton, Sean, and the great Kali. So Taker and Kali squared off. And uh, nobody had ever won the Rumble at number 30 to this point. So I'm so glad that the number 30 entrant, Undertaker, when it came down to him and Shawn Michaels, ended up winning. Over the hometown HBK. Because uh, you never knew who was going to win here. The hometown HBK or taker and that added to the allure of the climax and these two guys it, it's like they had a separate match and the fans stood for the entire uh, ending uh 56 minutes and 18 seconds is how the undertaker is where the undertaker eliminated sean uh ducking the sweet chin music and throwing him over the top rope to the floor so michaels is out and Taker won, and he'd go on to, to beat 
and main event for WrestleMania 23 against Batista in a great match. Anyways, this is a great Royal Rumble match, and whenever I'm reviewing the Royal Rumble rating as a whole, I look at the Rumble match as a great indicator of that rating. I give the Rumble match three stars and three quarters, and I give the Royal Rumble 2007 pay-per-view a 6.5 out of 10 as a whole. Uh, there should have been more uh, substance in the Rumble match. I, I know they were going for something different, but there should have been more spots with with fewer individuals. Uh, however, I'm not going to completely blame that because that's what made this Rumble what it was. It was original in a sense. And it was also original in the sense that two guys like Sean and Taker had that great climax. Anyways, guys, if you like my reviews and you want to see more, if you or if you want to see other countdowns and stuff that we're going to bring out in the future, please hit like and subscribe. Only takes a second, and uh, we'll come back with you for the next one. I'm Brett Mix. Till then, have a good one.